Hi, everybody. David Paul with you in the KHOU Love Weather Center. It is uh, Wednesday afternoon. This is the four o'clock update from the Hurricane Center on Hurricane Barrel. And first, the big picture. Gulf is quiet. There's Barrel uh, grazing the southern coast of Jamaica right now. And still watching this spot with a 20% chance for development as it moves west into the Caribbean. A global model is really not picking up on this. We'll keep an eye on it. But Barrel is the big story here, and it is ravaging the southern coast of Jamaica right now as a Cat 4. As of 4 o'clock Wednesday afternoon from the Hurricane Center, winds at 140, making it a Cat 4 hurricane, racing west-northwest at 20 miles an hour, and pressure's at 959 millibars. So that pressure has, since yesterday, been slowly, very slowly coming up a little bit, coming up a little bit, so it is an indication that the storm is weakening a little bit, but clearly still a very dangerous, powerful Cat 4 hurricane uh, grazing the coast of Jamaica. There's Kingston, there's Montego Bay on the north side, and they're getting hit hard right now. Gusts to 180 at times, especially on the northern eye wall, which is where the strongest winds will be. And you can see the eye trying to open up again here. There's the northern eye wall just hitting west uh, now of Kingston, Jamaica. Spaghetti plots very tightly packed now through Friday afternoon and all focusing on the Yucatan Peninsula. So it looks more likely that this storm will not shoot the gap, shoot the Yucatan Channel. It's going to hit land here on the Yucatan. So Cancun, Cozumel, Tulum uh, facing uh, the possibility, the likelihood of a hit from a major hurricane as it comes in on Friday. And then once it interacts with that land mass, it is going to weaken the storm. We think down to a tropical storm. The core of the spaghetti plot still take this into northern Mexico, but you can see there is still uncertainty. And in fact, you can see how the uncertainty grows as we go out to Sunday and Monday. That's just the nature of forecasting these things. The further out in time you go, the greater the uncertainty gets. And you'll see that reflected in the forecast from the Hurricane Center. Now, here is how this is moving. There's a uh, dome of high pressure to the north. That's what's been blocking the storm to the south. That dome of high pressure is a mountain of air. It doesn't want to go up that mountain. So it pushes it south, but there's going to be a gap open up in that high pressure to the north. And that gap, think of it as a, as a valley. It's going to allow the water, the, the, the easiest path, the path of least resistance, will become more to the north. And that's why you see this curve in the forecast cone, the forecast track from the Hurricane Center as we head into Sunday and Monday. Here is that forecast track. Again, this is the 4 o'clock advisory Wednesday afternoon. We do weaken this down to a cat 2. Uh, as we head toward the coast of the Yucatan, perhaps this will hit just south of Cancun. Tulum may take a direct hit from a Cat 2. This is going into uh, early Friday morning. And then Friday afternoon, the storm is over land over the Yucatan and weakening down to a tropical storm. You, you remove it from its uh, energy source, the surface of the sea, and it weakens rapidly. Then it reemerges into the warm waters of the southern Gulf. And we think this may redevelop into a Cat 1 hurricane as it heads toward perhaps northern Mexico. But you can see that's where the uncertainty in the forecast cone begins to grow. Again, just the nature of hurricane forecasting. And you know we could end up with a landfall closer to Brownsville, could end up with a landfall further away from Brownsville. That's Sunday afternoon as a Cat 1 out here and then going inland Sunday night. And by Monday afternoon, the center of the cone is inland. But you know, if this does do an outlier to the right-hand side of the cone, it could still be over open water and that would change the forecast completely and bring much more in the way of impacts to the Houston area. But if it stays for on the, on the left side of that cone, it would reduce our impacts here in Houston. If it were to stay in the center of that, you know, our impacts on the upper Texas coast would still be I, I'd use the word minimal. We'd have a Cat 1 hitting South Texas uh, over the years. What we've seen here are a little increase in rain chance, certainly an increase in surf, dangerous swimming, uh, could see uh, some minor coastal flooding at times of high tide. But that would be about it on that type of a track if it holds on the center. But again, that uncertainty tells us that we just have to keep watching it like a hawk. We don't know exactly how this is going to end up playing out. Stay close to the forecast uh, through the weekend so that if that forecast changes, if that track moves a little bit and the impacts are going to be greater, you're ready to take action. And then as far as anything else, just watch and be prepared for this storm or the next one by uh, knowing your evacuation routes and uh, being prepared to move, especially if you're on the coast, if this one or the next storm decides to uh, take direct aim at it. Surf and dangerous rip currents are expected as the storm, even if it approaches the South Texas coast as is, 
And again, still uncertainty in the exact final outcome of the track. We'll keep you forecast and, 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 and posted as far as the changes as we head into the, the uh, 4th of July holiday tomorrow here online. And so stay with us and stay close to the forecast as we continue to monitor barrel.